it's working today. Um, we are coming to you live with Dinner Wednesday because uh, Wednesdays are an after school activity day. So I get home late, I've got kids in dance and soccer, and it's really challenging when you've got lots of kids um, with all these outside activities to not go through the drive through So I'm bringing you one pot pasta that a teenager can make because if I'm out picking up kids and um, just getting them home, she can actually throw this in the microwave because it's super, super simple. So, Leia, say hello. Hello. This is my daughter, Leia. Leia, how old are you? I am almost 17. Awesome. You're still 16. In two months, I'm 17. <laughs> two more months. So she's going to make one pot pasta. Okay. So the star of the show is going to be the ingredients. So we're going to start with what? What's inside here? These are chopped onions. I put them into the um, quarters. And uh, garlic is in there too. Yeah. So we have a whole onion and we have one garlic clove and we're going to just pull that and make um, beautiful. You're in charge here. If you think it needs more, do more. So the power chef, the more you pull, the finer your chop is going to be. You keep pulling, you'll get a mince. You want to do a coarse chop, you just pull less. And then we have diced onions ready to go. So those are going to be put into our pressure cooker. And that really is the hardest part. So... The rest of this recipe really is measure and dump. So that's why we call it a dump recipe. What are you adding in next? This is eight ounces of, well, you can add eight ounces of um, ground beef, but we cut them into like um, sausage, like, like um, meatballs. Mm -hmm. So we're just going to dump those in. You're going to have to pull them apart. I cut them pretty well. But... So I have Italian sausage here and um, it's, you can use any type of meat that you prefer, ground chicken, you can use ground beef, um, whatever really your family wants. I had some Italian sausage in the fridge, so tonight we're having Italian meatballs with our one pot pasta. And this is all gonna cook in the microwave in about 10 to 12 minutes. When you're cooking in the microwave, you have to take your personal microwave into consideration. Um, and so it might take a little longer. It might take right at 10 minutes. And so you just, you have to play with it just a little bit um, to find out your specific microwaves needs. But it'll be done in 10 to, 10 to 12 minutes, no more than 15, definitely. Um, you wanna start at about 10, and then if it's not done, just a couple more minutes. All right, so we got our meatballs in there almost. So what I did with these Italian sausages, they did have a casing on them. So I just cut down the length of it and then I removed the casing. So these are gonna be just meat with no um, outer casing on them. And then we are going to add three cups of pesto, or not? Marinara. Marinara sauce. Or pasta sauce. Or pasta so pasta. you can put marinara, um, which is what the recipe calls for. Pasta sauce works the same exact way. You're just adding a tomato-based sauce to the pressure cooker. It calls for 24 ounces. We have a family size jar because we are a family, big family, um, but you only need half of that. So just three cups, 24 ounces. Mm -hmm. You get a small jar that's 24 ounces. It makes it even easier. The kid can just unscrew, dump it in, and then be done with it. And then okay? we're gonna add one cup of this beef broth. Now, this is going to be adding the liquid, the water portion that's going to cook your noodles. Yes, we're going to put raw noodles and raw meat into the pressure cooker. I see we have somebody who joined us. Say hello so we know who you are. Um, give me a thumbs up. Give lots of love to Leia. She's the chef tonight. We're doing Kids Can Cook One Pot Pasta. Hands off, Mom. I am just being the, the guy telling, helping her read through the recipe. And um, so what have we done so far in this um, we have put sausage, little meatballs, um, we put a cup of beef broth, beef broth, and then some marinara sauce, three cups of it, and we also have a teaspoon, mm -hmm. a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. So our spice, um, our spice, spice jars are, have two sides. We have the pull side so you can sprinkle um, I don't know if you can see that and this these have little teeth on them that actually 
push back through anything that might be stuck in those holes. And then we have our scoop side here with a leveler so that you can always have an accurate measurement if that's what you need. And then we're going to add a, like half of the box of the panini. Penne. Penne. Noodles. And you can use any noodles you want. I happen to have penne on hand. Macaroni noodles, zucchini noodles. Um, I would not do um, anything that's straight, like a spaghetti or a fettuccine or an angel hair. I wouldn't do those um, just because they you won't be stirring it as it's cooking. So you really want noodles that are shaped. Um, but you want to do wheels or you want to do um, shells or whatever. Um, you can actually play with that and make it different. Okay? So we're stirring it up. Show everybody what it looks like. This is what it looks like. All the stuff in it. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to seal it up with the top of the pressure cooker. So I want to talk about it real fast. So this is the top. So the bottom of the pressure cooker is, is just the bowl. It's a three-quart bowl, so it actually makes a lot of food. Um, it does have a max fill line, and that just keeps it from... Um, coming out these wonderful safety valves and just have a minimum because you want to be able to build pressure inside. Um, the pressure cooker is super safe. It's never going to explode. You have the silicone ring that will pop out um, and release any pressure if necessary. It also creates that vacuum seal. And then we have a pressure release valve here that will regulate and it will release. So if you're uh, looking in the microwave or right when you pull it out, you might see this um, open a little bit and then it might be be making noise like tss, or spitting a little bit. That's just pressure releasing. It's not a problem. You also have your gauge here. So when it's up, that's when pressure is built and you want to leave it alone. You want to let it rest. This will fall when the pressure has released fully and it's safe to open. And then we do have one more. Um, safety valve right here this is the last pressure release and that is sealed when you push the lock all the way down so the pressure can build inside and when you're done just in case there's a little bit of pressure left when you open the lock the pressure will release from there you won't have anything spilling out the side to close it you're going to line up this arrow okay with the arrow on the handle so there's actually an arrow right here on the handle. We're going to line them up and then twist it closed. So arrow to arrow and twist. And then you're going to pop that lock down. So now it is completely airtight. That's important to remember because when you're storing it, um, you want to put, you want to have the lid off when you're storing it because it is going to be an airtight um, or pretty much a virtually airtight container and you'll trap any smells or anything and you want that to be able to air out. Um, so we're going to pop this in the microwave for 10 minutes. 10 minutes, all right. And it's going to be 10 minutes on high. So this is going to cook that pasta, it's going to cook that meat, and then in about 10 minutes it's going to come out. We'll let it rest because the pressure will have built. One, zero, zero, zero. All the so your microwave is always on high. If you want to reduce the wattage or the power thing, you would do something. You push the power button, you push seven or five, that's reheating. Um, but it's always going to be 100% to start with. So was that easy? Yeah, it was very easy. So just a little bit of planning. Have some sauce, have some pasta, have some meat. Throw it all together and your teenagers can have dinner on the table when you bring back the little ones. All right. So thank you for joining us with Kids Can Cook. And we'll uh, post this recipe below in a few minutes. Bye. Bye.